Tough, multifunctional, and made for stressful conditions. It's designed for medium to heavy loads and is the perfect pack for extended adventures. It's the Phalanx Duty Pack and it has been my expedition backpack for my most challenging assignments. What's up gearheads, Noel here and in the previous video we talked about my travel backpack, the Kanai Sarkina Expedition Pack. It's wonderful and we also talked about what I had inside it. So if you haven't seen it yet, click right here. This time around, we're gonna inspect my expedition pack. So this is it right here, it's huge. I had to put in another table just so that it would fit inside the frame. The requirements were the same, but slightly bigger. I wanted something durable, tactical, had moldy panels, and didn't look like a camera bag. So thanks to Garand Thumb, I found the perfect one. So please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's dig in. Enter the Kanai Phalanx Duty Pack. I'm a big fan of Kanai Pro Gear, mainly because their designs appeal to me and their packs are durable and tough. The Phalanx comes in different colors, but I picked black to make it look less tactical. cool. Let's dive into the specs. The Phalanx has a 37 liter capacity with 30 liters coming from the main compartment and 7 liters from this external expansion area right here that's made for helmets and the like. It's made of tough, weather-resistant cordura nylon fabric and it has these great super grip zipper pulls and these are amazing. My fingers never slipped even when wet. It stands 22.5 inches high, 16.5 inches wide, and 7 inches deep. It weighs 4.2 pounds or 1.9 kilograms when empty. That's almost double the Sarkina Expedition Pack. It retails for $129.99. All right, so let's take this baby apart and I'll show you what I normally bring for assignments this year while going through the features of the Phalanx Duty Pack. So this is based on my last configuration, my last assignment, which was when I brought the Fujifilm GFX50 S2 on assignment to Masumiji Reserve for landscape and conservation photography work. So if you haven't seen my review of the Fujifilm GFX50 S2, the latest medium format camera, then click right here. Otherwise, let's dig in. So the first thing I want to show you would be this Velcro patch right here where I have my nameplate and I absolutely love this. It's cosmetic, but you know, it makes the whole pack look so good. Just behind it with the super grip zipper would be the sunglass pouch right here. So it's padded and I think it's felt lined to give some protection. So to avoid abrasions on your lens. So that's great. But make sure you don't lie down on it with too much weight. It might squish the glasses. Now zooming in further, you can see the quick access pouch right here. And inside I have a third party rain cover. So more on this later. And also if you dig in, these are Matador better tether straps that I use to lash on, let's say, sleeping bag or extra gear extra packs to the back of my phalanx now over here you have the molly panel you have 45 mil spec molly attachment points all around the bag and six exterior tough d-rings and six compression straps now this is the external expansion panel that is made usually for helmets but in my case i put my jacket here from Colombia and also my waterproof pants. These are much, much better than Gore-Tex. These are Omnitech. And then you have more Molly panels here inside and attachment panels for Velcro. Now here on the side, on the right side of the bag, well, it's heavy you have my outdoor specific tools. So for example, my paracord system right here, insect repellent spray, and headlamp is from Black Diamond, and then my Leatherman, and my Gerber knife. Now on the left side is the water bottle pocket, but instead of a flask, I put my tripod here. So this is the Peak Design Travel Tripod carbon fiber version. 
And you can see right now that I'm not using the standard head. I am using an Acrotech GXP ball head, which is a three in one. It's a ball head, panning head, and pseudo gimbal. It's lever clamp version, and it's the best investment I've made this year. Thank you, Dan Carr of Shutter Muse for the recommendation. And as you can see, it's secure here at the bottom, unlike in the Sarkina. But because of the these um, extension or compression straps, it's also secure here up at top. But for added security, I'm using a Peak Design key fob. So you have an anchor and an anchor point so that it really won't fall off. So let me demonstrate that for you right here. Let's remove the Peak Design anchor. And now we can pull out the tripod itself. There you go. Now the back of the pack is lined with these structured cushions to dissipate heat and for extra comfort. And when you open the zipper, is space for your hydration bladder. So this is a two liter version from Source. And you can also use this area for very sensitive documents like passports, cash, and also as a place where you can put your concealed carry. But of course we can't have that here in the Philippines. So I use it for hydration. Now I routed my hose through here and then on the straps. So I use these Molly, I don't know what you call this, thin paracord straps to just secure the hose right here and through the sternum strap, which like the Sarkina has a whistle. And also on the other strap, I have secured a very old version of the capture clip from Peak Design. Now let's put it here sideways so you can see the whole length of the bag. So down here is the waist belt, which you can actually remove and it's secured by Velcro inside. But what I love about it is here is a small pouch. So you can actually put your tools here, either the Leatherman or your knife for quick access. And the other side, just extra molly panels if you need it. Okay, so now let's empty the main compartment. Okay, so to open it, take off the compression straps and then the full zip compartment opens up. All right. So first I have this Peak Design packing cube small and inside I have a hat, neck gaiter, towel, and anything else that I need in the field. And then of course, the meat of it would be this Peak Design Camera Cube Medium. So I have the Peak Design Slide. And then I have the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 right here with a 30 to 64 zoom lens, which is like a 25 to 50 equivalent. And the Pro Media Gear L plate, universal L plate and Peak Design clutch. And then the 23 millimeter or 18 millimeter full frame equivalent for wide angle. And then my intervalometer and my triggers. I have my Nisi filters right here in this Adorama slinger pouch. And then camera and lens cleaning kit. And this Atomos Ninja Star, which I use to record my EVF for tutorials, BTS, and other stuff. So one thing I want to note about this camera cube is that since it's not made for the Kanai packs, it fits, but it's a bit too high. It's a bit too tall for it or thick for it. And it's a bit too wide. So it's really adding a lot of bulk to the whole pack, although it does guarantee protection for all the gear that you have inside. And at the bottom would be my first aid kit. So depending on the situation, I have it here at the bottom because there's so much space. With the camera cube over here, you leave some space here at the bottom. So I normally have it here, or if it's a risky situation wherein someone might fall or get cut, I would have it outside since it has molly straps too. And then finally gloves. Also, depending on the situation, I'd have them outside or here inside. 
But since there were a lot of limestone caves and rocks, these were very useful when we were climbing and hiking. Now with the main compartment empty, you can see that there are compression straps inside as well and a slot for your MacBook, your laptop, and you can see here is a tag made in Myanmar. Now on the inside of the cover is a sort of admin panel and starting from the bottom, this is my SD card case. It's connected right here. And then my think tank case for batteries. So the GFX 50S2 shares batteries with XT4. And then cliff bars. So depending on the task for the day, I usually have one or two. And then over here would be my FX line V mount battery. This is to charge all my gear, the phones, the gadgets, even the camera to power the camera too. And then notebook and then Sharpies and ball pens would go here. And of course my storm jacket cover. I keep it inside so that when, of course it rains, it's dry. Okay, so now that we've emptied the pack, let's assess it for its strengths and also the improvements that I think it needs. At the top of the list for strengths would be the design. I absolutely love how it looks. It looks really great and cool without being too tacty cool. And at the same time, I love the color, the black. And all these features give a lot of texture to the pack itself. Speaking of functionality, they really went all out with the features of this pack. And if you look at it, it has a lot of things that you need without being too over-engineered. So I like, really, really like this Molly panel, this patch for Velcro, and this expanded pack so I can put all the gear that I need in a jiffy and if I don't want to open the pack itself, the main compartment. And also, these D-rings are great for hanging other things like lamps or gloves, and the compression straps also are good because it keeps everything balanced and compact. You can really see and feel the quality and durability of this pack. So the materials are very tough and rugged and it's really, really strong, like the Molly mill spec panels and the D-rings and the compression straps themselves and even the felt lined compartments. So you don't have to worry about things getting loose or cut or falling off because that would really suck if you're out on expedition. These straps plus waist strap and this back panel makes this backpack really comfortable to use for long periods hiking and trekking and it's very cool. It doesn't make it too hot in your back and the sternum strap adds a lot of counterweight or balance plus it has a whistle if you're outdoors. So for survival, they've thought of everything for this pack. And of course, for $129.99, this pack is a steal. It's a duty pack. It's a camera bag, it's an outdoor bag, survival pack, hiking bag, everything. That's a lot of check marks for such a small investment. As for improvements, same with the Sarkina. Please, can I please make a rain cover for your packs? It's okay if you sell them separately, but you know, when it's raining really, really hard, it does get wet. I did try that out once and realized, you know what, I need a rain cover for this pack. I bought one from Lazada or Alibaba for really cheap. And it does the job right, but if you look at the photos, it looks like a trash bag. It looks ridiculous. Next would be the retention strap. So for this expansion area here, outside for the helmets, I use it for my waterproof gear. So in this case, my jacket and my waterproof pants are here inside and secured by the retention straps that you have to buckle. So if I have to open the pack though, like this, I have to unbuckle and then unzip the main compartment and what's gonna happen is when I open it my stuff outside can fall off right if there was a helmet there or something else it could fall off so maybe there is a way to secure this panel to the flap itself while still retaining the buckle for the compression strap so this was just a problem for me that i had to keep on opening it and risk my stuff falling off especially when hiking in the mountains that they could actually literally fall off the face of the cliff 
And lastly, I made the same request in the Sarkina review is if you guys would consider making packing cubes or camera cubes for your packs. I know you made camera cubes before and I'm not sure if they're sold out or they're phased out, but also that the reviews weren't that good. So if you would consider making them or improving on them, that could attach to the inside very snugly to your packs. I think that will go a long way to expanding your market. I know Kanai right now is made for active duty servicemen or outdoors people, but you could also lure in photographers and videographers and you know different chunks, different market groups into your fold if you just made those camera or packing cubes. Okay, so what is the verdict? The Kanai Phalanx Duty Pack is obviously a great outdoor and survival pack. And with some customization and configuration, it also makes for a great expedition pack for photography work. I've used it, I've tried it, and you know my complaints and the strengths that I've highlighted. But to add to that, it has a lot of capacity, but once you fill that in, it comes with a price, it gets bulky, and it gets heavy. But the weight and bulk is also offset by the durability, the flexibility, and the features of the pack itself. That said, if you're looking for a camera backpack that allows you to deploy your camera fast and chuck it right back in very quickly, this is not the pack for you. It's very strenuous to actually take out your camera. It has a lot of protection for it, but to get your camera, you have to release the buckles, extension straps, unzip the pack itself, then unzip your camera cube, take out your camera, zip them all up, buckle it up again, shoot, and then it starts raining and you have to put it in again, you have to repeat the process. So for something like that, easy deployment, then you may want to consider Mindshift Gear's rotation backpack instead. But if you don't need it to be deployed so fast, then this pack is for you. Plus, it doesn't look like a camera bag, so it sort of adds to your peace of mind. And that's my review of the Kanai Phalanx Duty Pack. If you have questions or thoughts on the pack, leave them in the comments. If you want to see more of my work, head over to my Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next video.